But seriously, you, you I mean, you haven't stopped working. You've got you, the new album, uh, yeah. Voices. Uh, true Stories. True Stories, yeah. True Stories. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well... It's, it's about your life, isn't it, really? Well, uh, some of it is, yeah. I mean, it's the first time that I've actually sat down and, and written something from scratch. Um, it's, it's funny, as a, as a performer, you know, you, you get sent songs over... 17 yeah. years now I've been a recording artist. And you get sent songs and you, you listen to them and you think, yeah, I like that, I'll record that. It's a brand new piece of music. Yeah. And then you change your line, you put a modulation in the middle, a key change, mm. and you go, I'm a writer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're not really. Yeah. So it was, it was my, uh, my producer, a guy called Bob Rose, legendary producer, worked with everyone from Roy Orbison to David ba Bowie. Mm. He's, he's amazing. And he said to me, you know, he says, you, you should write something, you should try. And I went, well, I don't know how. Yeah, well, just get For your a piece. life experience. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. he said to me. Yeah, he your says, life just... has been such a t up and down roller coaster. Yeah, and when it you has. have to face your own mortality, that must give you material for a song, must not it? It did. It did. And the first song that I wrote was was poignantly called "I'm Alive," which was about you know when I when I first got diagnosed, when I heard the news. I was in America actually. Um, I was in Los Angeles. We were recording at Capitol Studios, yeah. and. My headaches had got worse. I really didn't feel good. Mm. Went to see a specialist, and when I got the news, it was like this oh out-of-body yeah, experience. Yeah. Wow. And that's how the song starts. The, the first line is, when I heard the news, I couldn't move. I stared into an yeah, empty yeah. space. How did it feel writing that and reliving that it was moment? quite. It was quite cathartic mm. in many respects, because it, from, from my perspective, it felt like I'd you know, drawn a line under that period of time, because, you know, even now, ten years later, mm. I'm... Still, still talking about that because people want to know about it, mm. and, and I get a lot of letters from tumor survivors as well saying, yeah, yeah. "How did you do it?" Mm. And, and I like to engage. I do like to engage with people who've been through, yeah. you know, similar struggles to me, and explain to them what I did and how my my, my mental the, the way the way I kind of went about things, my, my attitude towards the illness was because that helps this ain't going to beat the me. Illness, doesn't yeah. It? yeah. Well, that's how I got from the fact, factory floor of a, an engineering shop to being one yeah. of the best-selling classical mm. artists on the planet with that drive and that... that, that when you go out on the stage... <laughs> that's 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 when you go out on the stage, you have to have that bond with your audience, yeah. don't you? You have to take them on... Yeah, up, and, and that was, in, the that was intensified yeah. after, after the illness because all of a sudden I was going on. Um, the first time, I remember the first time I sang the Bart Guno Ave yeah. Maria and all of a sudden it had real yeah, significance yeah, but... to me. Mm. And I remember I went on stage, and this was after the second tumour, which the one that nearly kind of finished my life. And I, I was on the stage the first time, and I started singing the Ave Maria, tears oh. flooding oh. down my face. Yeah, yeah. But the audience were, like, so engaged oh, with what yeah, I was doing because they knew I was it feeling with you, absolutely. 